This is Ronald Dilsa II, and I want to invite you to check out the Ronald Dilsa II podcast. The Ronald Dilsa II podcast dives deep into the business of producing film, television, and multimedia. With over a decade of experiences in producing and teaching in the entertainment industry, I thought it was time to drop some knowledge into the world from my own experiences. Not only will you hear countless topics from me to motivate you on your own journey, you'll also hear about the journeys of some amazing individuals I've been super blessed to work with. And guess what? I'm still on my own journey. So get your pens and paper ready. You might learn something. You can check out the Ronald Dilsa Second Podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms. It's funny with Monique, sometimes, you know, she's um, went on to this natural hairstyle now, you know, that she's doing beautifully, y'all. Um, but now she'll be in the mirror doing her hair like, oh, it's just growing so nicely. Oh, look at this, my love. What do you think? And I'm like, uh, babe, I don't know nothing about no hair. Uh, it looks nice, you know, <laughs> so, but it showed me that my wife is desiring me to acknowledge it. And so... Those are things that you notice when you're so connected to your spouse. My wife wanted me to tell tell her that I like it and it's beautiful. So guess what I started doing? I try my best, but I try to try to incorporate that. So <laughs> you do. Like today, he probably oh, told me man. I was beautiful. Y'all see me like, like this five plus times, oh, maybe yeah. ten times. Oh, yeah. It was as, every time you saw me, there, you like. So That's because I want some. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now in thanksgiving for this podcast. Thank you for the listeners tuning in. We pray that this show will be a blessing for their ears and may it be a word for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. What's going on? We are back at it again. How you doing, my queen? How you doing? Yeah. We are blessed and highly favored. I'm feeling mighty well on tonight. How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. Feeling blessed. It's been a a busy day, but it's been blessed. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing. We're going to give a shout out to our wonderful DJ Frosty for this hot beat. Man, we're still rocking this beat. Uh, DJ Frosty jumped in with us when we originally started recording yes. God Family Business back, way back, way back, about three years or four years now. Hot, Year right? four now, right? Like yeah, man. Check out DJ Frosty. Man, my brother got some really hot beats over there. If you're looking for some, you know what I'm saying? So, we mm. back. We, we back. back. <laughs> we back. <laughs> you hear hey, the sound effects? Hey, <laughs> hey. Hey. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. So what's going on, my queen? What's new with you? Ooh, wow. Well, I'm um, getting ready for some workshops, actually. Oh, talk getting about ready, it. Getting ready. Talk you about know, it. Um, one of the things that I love to do is to teach the healing that God gives us. Amen. So I'll be hosting just two weekends of workshops. One weekend is um, designated for diabetes, just teaching the healing mm-hmm. on diabetes, how you can use leaves, herbs, spices, all of that. Know how to eat, when to eat, know what your numbers are supposed to be looking like. Just understanding and just kind of breaking it down, yes. um, you know, to the level where the patient understands. Because a lot of times mm-hmm. the doctors will kind of speak to you and they don't realize that they're speaking in medical jargon <laughs> and nobody gets right, it, huh? you know, but I'm really going to break it down to where um, you can really, really understand so you can feel empowered to heal. And yeah. I'm doing that for diabetes and for blood pressure. Yeah, I don't so. know about y'all, but I know sometimes when I'm listening to them doctors, they be sounding like, Really? <laughs> <laughs> like what? What are you saying? I can what are you understand. Saying? Okay, if y'all yes. y'all can relate, right? 
Hopefully y'all relate, right? Yes, right. yes. All yes. right, cool stuff, my love. Are we on um, silent over there? I know I got to remind you because, you know, we are recording. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, I'm putting you on blast. Make sure, because you be blowing up over there. You know, she be blowing up, y'all. She be blowing up. So yes, I yes. made sure her phone uh, on silent. All right. Yes. But yes, but pray you all are doing well. We got a lot of exciting things coming up. I'm wondering if I'm ready. I, I don't know if I'm ready to tell y'all my big news yet. So we're probably going to hold off just a little bit longer. Uh, but we have some exciting news. Um, we have a, a major, major production possibly in the works for next year. So looking yes, forward to yes. sharing that news. I'm excited. I ain't going to tell you sure. just yet. I know I'm, I'm messing with you right now. I know y'all like, man, Ron, stop playing, you know, but uh. We'll be sharing that news very soon. Okay, I promise you. So, yeah, so a lot of exciting things going on on this wonderful journey of faith. And we are continuing to proceed, continuing to trust God on this wonderful journey that he has us on. Uh, we have a very amazing topic, right, for this, yes, for this one. Um, so, yeah, you want to tell us how did this topic come about? You know, tell well, us what God the topic is so good. Is. Yeah. We're always, you know, Ryan and I, we're always talking and we just talk about everything and... Yeah. um. Just good, bad, whatever it is we're going through. Uh, we've been going through a lot, um, especially with our family. Um, there's been some death in the family, right? There's been um, great things going on, too. But we talk about it all, you know. And one of the things we talk about is just marriage. And, um, you know, our marriage is standing the test of time. So yes. that's how this topic came about. Like, why don't we talk about the test of time? The test so, of time. Especially when it comes to marriage. Yes. So. Yes. And so like my wonderful queen is saying, um, yeah, we we have been through a lot in our marriage. And yes, a lot of have. people say, hey, that first year is usually the, the probably the roughest that we've heard. But well, we've been through a lot for the last five years, we say, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. it's only because of God that we've been able to hold on and and make it through this journey together because it's been a lot of ups and downs. Not with us. It's just the circumstances that came around us, you know, and we just happen to be in the midst of it all together. So that's what makes it very interesting on this journey, just the way God has kept our bond mm-hmm. uh, and our love for each other, because we still love on each other like <laughs> like we've always had, no matter what's going on around us. And I think that's just so important, no matter what you and your spouse are still able to show that wonderful love that you both um, always showed each other. So it's always important to do that. So, yeah. So let's get into it. This is a hot topic. So the test of time. All right. The test of time. We are ready to jump in. All let's right. Go. Um, All so right. first uh, what does the test of time Ooh. mean to you? Okay. What does the, that's always a Another good one. Um, okay. So the test of time means to me, all right. Um, is basically to me, I would say that, um, well, in this case, we're talking about marriage. So you're able to be with your spouse, no matter what's going on in the world around you, no matter what's going on in that relationship, you're able to get through that test together. Um, and sometimes it can be more than one test. You know, it can be a whole bunch of tests, a season of testing, you know, um, but you're able to make it through together. You know, regardless, your your marriage works, your relationship works um, and you're able to get through that test of time. And usually, as we know, it's because of God that we're able to get through this test together, because uh, a lot of times it's God who's testing us in certain ways to make us stronger, you know, as we prepare for the next season. And then there's a lot of time is the enemy doing some other things going on. Right. We all know that can happen, too. And so you really have to just look at God when you're going through tests and just know ultimately he's the one that's in control. He knows everything that you're going through and he's going to see you through. You just got to let go, which is always say it's easier said than done, (laughs) because a lot of times we struggle with that. Right. We struggle with letting things go. I know I do, you know. Um, And so it's, you know, it's basically just building that prayer life um, and just building that trust in God, because ultimately that's what he wants you to do. You know what I'm saying? So what about you, my love? Well, I mean, for me, what it means um, is your relationship going to withstand 
um, the storms, mm. you know, oh, yeah. the the valleys, okay, um, the lows. Um, mm. Is your relationship going to make it through the darkness, mm. right? Because it's not always light, right? So getting through those tests right. will allow you to get through time. So will your relationship stand the test of time? Because on the journey with time, mm -hmm. you're going to have tests. Oh, yeah. Um, especially when it comes to your relationship. Um, but just life in general, life is going to come at you. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, you know, with every passing day, um, whatever it may be. Right. It may not even have to be with what we're going through. It could mm -hmm. be with what our family's experiencing yeah. that yeah. weighs on us that we're bringing to our spouse. You know, whatever that case may be, is your relationship strong enough to hold that type of stress? Yeah. Right. So um, that's what it means for me. Yeah. The test of time mm -hmm. um, when it comes to a relationship. Right, because there's a test of time for a lot of things yes. out there. Oh, yes. But when it comes to a relationship, um, are you able to withstand the storms? Mm -hmm. Right. Are you able to withstand the rain, the wind? Um, and then including beaming in the sun. Mm -hmm. Right. So just whatever comes your way, is your relationship strong enough right. to uphold itself? Yeah. So. No, I love that. I really love that. And. I know with me being able to make it through, um, what helped me a lot was the way we communicate with each other. Yeah. Um, I know even before we got married, we was already communicating, but that was a lot of things that a lot of couples were telling us, like communication is so important mm -hmm. um, for success, you know, for a successful marriage. And so hands down, it's very important. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have to be able to talk to your spouse about anything and everything and uh, Monique and I like Monique knows my darkest secrets y'all so she knows everything I've I've told her everything you know all my darkest secrets um and I just had to release those and and she took them in and um you know being able to have someone that you can trust with that information you know and just be able to move forward you know um, it's, it's a really, a huge blessing, you know, to be able to let that go off your chest, but to also, you know, trust her with that knowledge, you know what I'm saying? And vice versa, you know what I'm saying? Yep, so communication is so important. I didn't want any secrets, um, coming into our marriage. Um, and so that was just something that I just wanted to release. Like, this is me. This is who I am. This was my struggles, you know, for years, you know? This is what I dealt with, you know, as a child, you know, different things. You know, it was just very important for me to release that information with, to her. Um, and so that really helped. And it helped me trust her, even in the seasons that we're in now, where I can come to her if something is on my heart that's heavy. If I have something even going on with the family and it's just not sitting with me well, um, I can express my feelings to her. And she always give me her, um, you know, her experience and also find a, a better way to look at the situation. So I may see it more as a like, ah, oh, I can't believe this is going on. I, I don't even know if it was something I did. And then she'll put, put it and turn it into a positive every time. It's funny that we do that with each other. Um, but yes, yeah, she always turn it into a positive. Like they, they didn't mean it probably that way. Maybe they meant it this way. And it, it just, it makes you look at life a lot more different. And that's one way I would say that you're with someone that really cares a lot about you, even when someone in the family upsets you. And I'm just going to say, what if it's a sibling? What if it's a parent? You know, they just kind of, you know, just make you feel a certain way about something that's going on. Your spouse, you know, when you bring that to them, naturally, some spouses out there may just be negative. Well, you shouldn't listen to them or you shouldn't care what they say. You know, they don't live under our roof or whatever. That's not my spouse. My spouse always find a positive to shine light onto the family and that situation. And it gives me peace. You know, instead of keeping me angry about the situation, I look at it at a different perspective. Um, and that's what she does for me. You know what I'm saying? And I know it's been a couple of times 
I've done the same, you know, and yeah. I'm just like, I didn't even notice that we do that, but both of us do that with each other. You know, <laughs> she have a situation mm-hmm. like where maybe bro, bro didn't mean it that way. Maybe mom didn't mean it that way. I'm sure they have your best interest, you know? And so that's something that really helped us grow forward. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so what about that. you? What you has helped that. you? <laughs> um, Oh, well, you know my secrets as well. <laughs> you got secrets? So. <laughs> Hold on now. Hold on now. Oh, wrong See, one. I didn't say wrong anything. One. I was, I was going to joke around with yours too, that's but I, I didn't say anything. That's the one I, I meant. Like, Let me just put my serious face yeah, on. Yeah, that was one I meant. But, um, you know, you come into the marriage and you want to share everything. And I think that that's very important. Um, it's so important to just share and be comfortable sharing, you know, not yeah, feeling yeah. like you're going to be judged and just being able to be open and free. Yeah. Um, this is me. This is this what, what you um, yeah, <laughs> this is what I've been dealing with. This is what I've been struggling with. This is what I've done. Even mm. this is, yeah. um, you know, where I had to grow. Mm hmm. Um, whatever the case was, um, you know, you just releasing it all. And it's so important to have a spouse, um, that is going to accept you for everything you are and not hold that judgment, um, over you and just help you, yeah. you know, be better. And, um, it has allowed me, like you said, to of course, trust you, um, cause it's kind of like. Us telling each other all of that, it's like, okay, we yeah, can handle we everything can else. Everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like, just get everything. I mean, I mean, talking about just the back stuff, like from childhood yeah. all the way up until now in adulthood, just mm-hmm. releasing it all, you know, because um, if you can handle that, mm-hmm. then you can handle pr- pretty much everything else oh, that yeah. may come. Yeah, because it's like you didn't already um gave all your history. Yeah, all your so history. So like that's already like a test in itself. Just wow, just releasing Boom. on palm, you know. And not saying that you haven't. Um, maybe maybe um for someone you can release all of that information in in one session. <laughs> but I know for us it probably was like maybe a couple of times just talking and um yeah. we released it. Kind of little by little. Yeah, don't just, dump don't dump yeah. all your business the on them. The big dump, right? Don't dump it all at one time. You know, you got to kind of grow into the, that. The dump, dump, right? But yeah, yeah, but think about it like this too, which, you know, as we continue to grow older and wiser, um, especially in our faith, think about the impact your childhood has on who you have become. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's great things, which praise God for those great things. You know, your parents... Um, things that you've learned from them that you can kind of portray onto your spouse. You know, like I grew up in a household. My Both my parents were there. So naturally, that's what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? I wanted a wife who was going to be with me, just like my mom and dad are still together, still loving on each other and still, you know, there for each other. And so naturally, as a, as their son, I desire the same thing. So a lot of stuff that we may have went through as children, you know, has a negative impact on who we become. And so those are the things that we continue to work on, continue to develop. But think about how that helps us out when it, when it helps our spouse. One deals with us when situations come up that we just, you know, if they know more about who you are and what you've been through, it helps them more so pray for you and support you when situations come up. Mm. And so it, it's really um, a huge key, you know, if you can. And I know some of you probably like, man, I ain't trying to share everything. But that's us. You know, we were just like, we're going to share everything because guess who knows everything already? Mm. Amen. So if, if God yeah. put that person in your life, trust mm-hmm. me, they're going to look at you. The same way God looks at you. So you are basically releasing that off of your chest. You're releasing it off your heart. It's going to help your your marriage. It's going to help your relationship because Lord behold, stuff come up and you don't know how to handle it. Guess what? Your spouse already know your business and they're going to help you handle it. You know, regardless of how ugly it is, 
they're going to help you get through that. You know what I'm saying? And that's why prayer is so important, praying together, too. Um, but yeah, but think about that, like how it would, it would be so helpful just to release that stuff. So they know your history. Um, for instance, let's say you had a drinking problem, you know, and you just, you know, maybe your dad had a drinking problem and you've just been around alcohol all your life. And now, you know, you've been able to kick that for a while, but something comes up in life and it shakes you up and somehow you end up with a bottle in front of you. If your spouse don't know about your history, it's going to be a lot harder for them to understand why is this happening now? You know what I'm saying? And if they know now they know, hey, that's not a good idea. You know, let's talk through this. Um, Even if you messed up, let's just try to move forward and and away from that, you know. Um, So it just makes the situation. They're able to help you more in those dark times and just keep you lifted in prayer because that's ultimately Um, The main thing we need from our spouses is keeping us lifted in prayer. So, wow. Oh, sorry. I'm just letting the spirit move. (laughs) Amen. 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 (laughs) But it's great just to know or be in the know just because like like um, my husband said, if something comes up, it's like you already know what's going on. So nobody can, you know, twist twist, um, the story or the situation Mm -hmm. because it's already been, you know, released. Whatever it is, it's already been released and you're aware of it. Like nothing is tripping you up. You know, they know... um, no new art or information fall. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's good to just be in the know, um, especially when it comes to your spouse. Absolutely. So what kind of, we're talking about the test of time. So what kinds of tests can come in a marriage? Mm. Um, I think the biggest thing um, that we're learning to how to cope with is having children and being able to carve out that time. That's a hint for a new episode coming later. But um, the importance of carving out time for each other, because um, one, with children, children change everything. Like if you have children, you know, they change everything. We're giving them so much of our time, so much of our focus, so much of our energy. So um, usually at the end of the day, we're so like tired. Like even tonight, we were like, oh, we're tired, but we want to get this recording done, which as you see, once we start, boy, God be moving because yeah. we have that energy and we just go. But just to get in here, man, you pulling teeth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you be so tired. So, um, so yeah. So just having that time with my wife, I've missed that time so yeah. much. We've been through so much. Mm-hmm. Thank God that he's been with us through this journey. He's given us so many memories before the children, because it's a lot of times I'm like, well, what is it all for if we can't spend time together? You know what I'm saying? What is it all for? Um, And so we've tried to make an appoint to have a date night every week now. And it's easily just in the house, you know, even if it's in the house because our children are still young. We try to make a point like, hey, we're going to have we're going to watch a movie together or we're going to do what do you want to do, you know, for date night this week? You know, it's something I usually say. So we kind of go back and forth. It's not just all what I want to do. It's we're going to go back and forth. Some nights I pick, you know, some weeks we'll let uh, Monique pick, you know. So it's kind of like one of those great things that we're trying to make sure we incorporate and look at this, y'all. The man is stepping up here to say, this is law. If it's going to work, we're going to have to make time for each other. OK, I, I don't want to hit no excuses because if, if a production come and I get busy, I don't want this one over here to talk to no. I'm like, hey, I tried to do our date nights. Now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just letting y'all know y'all my witness now. I've been trying to push date nights every week. So we scheduled for Saturdays right now. Saturday nights is our time. Um, it gives us, you know, a moment to rest for that Sabbath and just have, you know, be able to pull away from the week and then Saturday night, you know, enjoy some time together after we put the kids down. So, so yeah, so I would say making sure you get that time is definitely a test of time (laughs) because (laughs) that's like the ultimate test of time. It goes together, but, um, it's so important to make sure you're getting that time with your spouse. Because think about it like this. If you had so much time together, you know, before children where you all were just you're going on dates, whether it's once a month, you know, once every two weeks paycheck, you know, time we all know. Um, And let's say, you know, the children came 
you don't have any dates. And that's pretty much how it's been with us because we went through a lot with our firstborn, a lot of mm-hmm. commitment, a lot of energy, a lot of time. And then we had two around COVID season, <laughs> you know? So one before COVID season, one, you know, later on during COVID season. So, um, so yeah, so it was kind of like, we didn't really get any alone time, you know what I'm saying? So it was just different to the point now that the children are, um, somewhat in school, all of them, um, have some of them have time, uh, throughout the week. And we're able to just kind of have a little moment to even just go to the stores. Just the two of us. Like, it's just, yeah. it feels like, wow, this is the <laughs> dream life right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just to be able to go and have that moment together. It's so important, you know, for that. So, yeah. So that would be my thing. Just test having that time, you know, for each other. So that's. Uh, so some of the tests that come in marriage. So for you, it would be um, time. Yeah, with time. With your spouse. Okay. Time with your spouse. You know, you okay. have to. And and just to get back to that question, you got to think about it, too. You're not going to always be able to get that time. You pretty much have to make the time because it will be some times that you both are just tired and exhausted. You know, it happens to all of us. And so are you able to understand that situation and say, hey, my spouse is really exhausted and tired this week. Let's just rest. You know, let's just rest, my love. And we'll we'll get some time in. We'll try again next week. You know what I'm saying? It's been many times we had to do that. And so, you know, are you able to stand those tests? You know, when your spouse is not maybe feeling the best or maybe they just are exhausted. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just want to get some rest, you know, um, are you able to understand that as a spouse? You know, that's a good one too. So, so yeah, we've seen it all. I mean, most of it, most of it, not everything yet. No, I got a lot of learning to do. But, but yes, um, I will say that, um, you know, it's been quite a journey. Um, especially, um, we didn't realize how much time we had when we were, it was just us. Oh yeah. Right. We didn't, I don't think we took advantage of it as much as we could have. Mm-hmm. Um, cause now we're doing stuff with the kids that it's kind of like, I, I'm asking like, we never did this. Like when, when it was just us, like, you yeah. know, going out into nature and exploring walking, and yeah. walking and looking, you know, looking at different trails. Like we're taking the kids, but we yeah. never did that when it was just us. But of course, when the kids come in, um, Especially, um, mom, y'all already know, um, it gets really, really busy Mm -hmm. and I'm really proud of my husband and thankful for my husband for saying, you know, we got to carve out some time for each other, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, we're going to set a night every week that we connect and, um, thank you for doing that. Yeah, um, because <laughs> sometimes you just get lost in the day and the many things that you have to do as a mother and as a wife. Um, and especially if you have more than one child, um, you're doing a lot. And then of course, in the earlier period when, um, it was just already three taking right. him through the, the procedures, um, it could be a lot. It really could be. So, um, you really have to be intentional, about the time that you spend oh, yeah. um, with each other. So um, I really appreciate you just saying, all right, day night, yeah. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Um, or even asking, hey, what do you want to do? And um, we we kind of go from there. So definitely um, time could definitely, time, right? Time could be a test mm-hmm. um, um, in marriage. Um, I think... Just in general, um, what are the different tests? Um, not even talking about our marriage, just in general, the different tests that could come in marriage. Mm. Um, uh, financial financial tests. Is big, um, yeah. I would say um, the enemy is going to try to to yeah. to do all sorts of things. Okay. Yeah, the enemy um, don't want us to be together. Period. Man, None of us. Okay. So I mean. None of us. Um, we haven't really had like tests when it comes to, um, you know, like outside of the marriage activities. We haven't had tests. 
Um, we talk about everything. So it's mm-hmm. like if somebody in the store is like, hey, um, you know, they make a comment to either me or <laughs> or him, we're, we're going to talk about it, right? Um, or if we end up running into like uh, X or something, <laughs> we're going to talk about it, you know? It. <laughs> no x yeah you know? i mean you know it's That's a small funny. world mm-hmm. so we're gonna talk about it but those are tests that come up in marriage yeah. in marriages oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. right um exes um old flames old relationships um just random people um you know trying to hit on you that sort of thing um, you know, just the enemy really um just trying to 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 poke you um yeah. in certain places and like none of that moves me. <laughs> I know mm-hmm. none of that moves um well, let me not speak for you. <laughs> I like, know you can speak it, for it yourself. Was just one time. No, uh, <laughs> um, but none of that like we we have such great communication that none of that moves um us. But those are tests that come up. So oh, yeah. how do you get to that point where it doesn't move you, right? So um, let's talk about that. So these mm. are the tests that can come up in marriage, right? Um, giving the time to each other, um, you know, infidelity. Uh, um, what else did I say? Um, promiscuity, uh, financial problems. I mean, mm. one of the biggest tests in our marriage was me stepping away from working a six figure job. Yeah. <laughs> so here you have like a six figure income that is no longer, right? And um now we are um in our um faith walk where my husband is taking care of everything, right? So now, mind you, my wife's six figure was the the main source of income that the big source of income compared to what I was making. So that's yeah, where the tests I mean, come in at. That is definitely a big <laughs> test. Definitely a big test. My husband, by God's grace, makes decent money. Amen. And we're Amen. we're very grateful. Enough. He has a really, <laughs> really great career. And um not only that, you're by God's grace able to do production work. And when production work comes in, um, mm. we're so blessed to have the extra income from there. Yeah. Um, so we give God praise for what my husband is working in. Um, he loves his career. He loves where he mm. works and what he does. So we give we're so grateful for my husband's income. Amen. And what he's able to also bring in from production, which takes care of our family. So walking away from that additional um, income, that's a test. Okay. That was probably one of the biggest tests in really our marriage. Big, yeah. I was going to ask that as well. What was the biggest test that, that would be in it. our marriage? <laughs> yeah. So how now what I would ask you is, that being the biggest test, because that's definitely a huge test in marriage. A lot of times yeah. it's finances, right? Mm-hmm. So with that being said, how were you able to navigate or even still navigate? Because we're still here yeah. been five years. How are we able to navigate through this test um, that we're currently in, you know, <laughs> this faith journey? Yeah. Um it's only God, y'all. Yeah, I can't even take no credit for anything. Like I say, when my wife and I, you know, God allowed us to move forward and and build our home. And then we had this wedding that was beyond any of our expectations, the dream wedding. Uh, we got a new vehicle as a family. It was just all these different things. And then we have our firstborn coming and we're hearing that some complications may be happening um, inside the womb. And so just to be able to take all that, know what's going on, we're already in it. So it's kind of like there's no turning back now. Just like in a movie, you get to that midpoint, there's no turning back. You Now you're in it. You know what I'm saying? So you have to move forward. And so um, the day my wife came to me, it was kind of like, you know, I was just, I, I, I would say I was probably numb, not negative at all. It was just kind of like, okay, my love, if if that's what God is leading us, leading you to do, you know, but in my mind, I'm like, I don't know how the heck we're going to do this, Lord. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, whoo, OK, <laughs> whatever you have for us, Lord. Um, and I always talk about this. I remember right before my wife came to me, that specific check that I had just received 
God had led me to get back to tithing because I was struggling to tithe because of bills. Um, and so I had kind of fell off on it because I just didn't have the extra. I was always trying to pay my bills and make sure they're done on time. And so this um, specific check, God was like, you need to get back tithing. And I felt that in my spirit so deeply that I had to move. I had to move. I paid the tithe first, uh, which is something that my wife always taught me because that's what she does. She treated as a bill. That's the first bill that has to be paid to the point when any money come in. I'm like, OK, I got to figure out where this tithing offering going. You know what I'm saying? I got to get that taken care of before I spend anything, you know. Um, and so that's how we have. You know, I started on that back on that journey and I've just been committed to it. Um, And I know for a fact that that's why God has been truly blessing us and keeping us because we've been faithful to get that tithe back um, in place. Because my wife was now look at this, too, as as, as, um, a spouse, your spouse is covering the tithe and offering. So in a sense, yeah, you may not be doing it on your end, which is not good, you know, because it needs to be a joint effort. But my spouse had been covering, my wife had been covering the tithe and offering. So God has been still blessing us even when I wasn't able to do so. You know what I'm saying? He was blessing us still because of her faith. Um, and then now, now that her income, you know, her her main income, because now she has businesses in place, but her income that has been keeping us comfortable, that's been handling the, a, a huge um, section of our bills, I would say, because of the income she was making, is now going away. So yeah. that tithing offering is now going away. You know what I'm saying? So what did God do? He moved me to take the place that he needed me to already be in. And and so that's how I was led. And I guarantee you, God truly, he has blessed us. We're still in our home, as we always say. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still have our vehicle. And I mean, we've We've seen we've seen God just work in some miraculous ways when it comes to us. And it's just mind blowing. And we can only tell you some of the stuff now. Um, You know, we are working on some some other, you know, productions just to kind of share that story on a whole different level. Um, But we have seen God in such a mighty way, just stepping out on faith and. And I'm going to tell you, it's not easy. It was scary as I don't know what to do it, um, more so because you are living in the unknown, as we call it now. Yeah. We don't know. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. All we know is God got it. And yeah. that's all God needs us to that's know. It. We don't know how he's going to do it, uh, but that's we know he's going to handle the business as we've seen on many times, many occasions, many times. Um, wow. I'm just, just blown away. Five years, y'all. Five yeah, years living five like years this, on one income. Faith, faith <laughs> journey. And we're still here. It's like like wow. the kids have everything they need. We're still in our home. We still have our vehicle. We eat good. Y'all see the reels with the food that we're eating. Yeah, um, so blessed. We're so blessed. Like we've had an amazing um health journey, even with um my husband, everything being oh, turned yeah. around. So even in that five year period, so many things have happened, including mm-hmm. being um turned around um with our health. Right. And right. then um oh, yeah. just spiritually, it's just on a whole different level. Um, where I was five years ago, um, wow. like where I am now, like that girl, she didn't know. Okay. What, what girl was but, that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> but now I know, like, I know God is there. I know with God, it's already done. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, you're going to have those moments, especially the enemy tries to remind you of things, especially when you yeah. just forget about it. You're like, okay, I know God got it. I'm good. And you just keep going about your business. But then the enemy like to send somebody or something to remind you of mm. what you were thinking about for just a second. Right. Yeah. And it's like, right. Well, if you don't just go somewhere, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, so, you know, it's only God why you're able to get through the tests in marriage um whatever it is whether it be financial um whatever the test may be um you know somebody coming at you um in you know in an inappropriate way um your children even um whatever it is the tests that are thrown at you it's literally only god i i really don't understand how uh, people raise children without knowing God because you really have to have a patience that only God can give you. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes they will 
take you there. Say they are the true you know? testers. <laughs> and, you know, you just have to have patience. They're children. So, of course, their way of thinking is going to be different from yours as an adult. They don't, they're still developing logically and still, you know, developing their responses and um, mm-hmm. their character. So that's why we're here to lead them and to guide them and not to just lash out on them and be rash and just, um, you know, blatant and just, you know, they're children. But in order to understand that and have patience with them um, and just nurture them and bring them back around, you got to know God. Like, yeah. that's what God does with us. Right. You know, God right. is not lashing out on us. He's not you know, um, bashing us or, you know, tossing us um, left and right, even though it may feel like it, right? Sometimes, but when you tap in to that peace that Mm -hmm. God will give you, right? If you but ask for it and just leave all your burdens on the Lord, right? Then you just feel that nurturing, like he just wants to hold you and nurture you and help you get through whatever test, of time that has come your way. Amen. And that's the Amen. only way mm-hmm. you're going to make it is if you have God. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah. Amen. I love that. That was that was amazing. <laughs> amazing. I got more. I got oh, she has more. Okay. Sorry, yeah, my questions are in here oh. today. Um so right. we did that, the biggest test in our marriage, and we did that. How do you na- navigate through it? We mm-hmm. already did that. That's yeah. with God. And what do you think is the problem in a lot of relationships today in terms of handling the test? I think it's communication. Um, and, I mean, it goes back to just basically releasing all that, your dirty secrets to your spouse and not trying to put right. that pressure on anybody <laughs> that's listening right now. But I know for a fact that helped me, um, you know, just be able to one, release it. But think about it like this. If something comes up, maybe you slipped up and back into one of those sins that you've been struggling with, or maybe you've done something that you necessarily wasn't supposed to do. Wouldn't it help if your spouse already knew about that stuff? So when you come at them about it, you know, naturally they'll be able to receive it better and they'll be able to kind of give you some comfort, you know, um, in that situation, because Hopefully by now, because they have already known about this, they're more prepared because they've been praying. If they are, if they are a real spouse, you know, from God, they've been praying um, for all that for you, too, especially if they know it's been something that you have been struggling with for quite some time. So. Um, so, yeah, I forgot the question. Sorry, I got so deep into it. What was the question again, my love? I'm trying to remember. See, see, but- see. <laughs> no, but. um. I got to go look at it again. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. It's, it's it late, y'all. Good. So just when you get to this time of the day after you've been taking <laughs> care of the kids the other day, you're just kind of like, hey, we're here. We're going to talk. Let's do hey, it. Hey, we've been you doing know? well. You know, we're doing great. It's been going good. I've been excited. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Oh so, my yeah, but I have to remember the question. So, I'll yes. go off so on a tangent. what do you think is the problem in so many relationships? That's today? what it was. So, yeah, yeah. So the communication is definitely yeah. a huge problem. And that is basically, you know, that's what I was trying to say. When you release all that dirty baggage, as we call it, um, that's starting communication right there. You're letting them know, hey, this is some of the struggles I've had in the past. I've been yeah. able to get over it. Sometimes I slip up. But I've been able to get through it, you know, and so now they already know about that. So if that comes up again, then, you know, you're taken care of. They, they'll have a lot more understanding than them just finding out for the first time. Um, but when it comes to it, let's say you do decide, which most of us do, to hide those dirty secrets, you know, depending on how dirty they are. you know. Um, so you're hiding those from your spouse. So think about it. if you're already hiding secrets from your spouse And let's say something comes up. Maybe you run into a a female friend that you went to school with and, you know, you had a little crush on her, but, you know, you're married now. Right. And she kind of was weakening at you and and give you her number or whatnot. You think you're going to go home and tell your spouse that if you can't tell her your dirty secrets that you already had, you're going to be trying to steal (laughs) high secrets. You see what I'm saying? Even if you don't plan to call that woman, you feeling good because, oh, I still got it. I still got it. I still, Monique better make sure she come with it. I still got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how people be thinking. So if you already clear the plate, you've already told your spouse, like, if I slip up, 
you know, and, and do something and fall back, guess what? I feel guilty until I talk to my spouse about it. No matter what it is, I feel guilty. Y'all. My heart is heavy. I got anxiety. And then as soon as I let her know, yeah, babe, it's one of them days. And I feel a relief from my heart. And she always pat me, hey, come on, let's keep going. Keep stay strong. You got this. You got this. You know, God got it. You know, um, that's the motivation we need. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because it will come sometimes that you may slip up. It will come sometimes that you may fall back. You know what I'm saying? But if you have the right person by your side, they're going to continue to motivate you even in those times. And that's what God wants to do. The enemy doesn't want to motivate us. The enemy wants us to feel guilty. The enemy wants us to feel like God is going to turn his back on us. The enemy just want us to be deep in that hold and continue to do that sin, whatever it is. But God wants the opposite. God wants you to, one, be delivered from that sin. Two, move forward and continue to build on your relationship with him Mm -hmm. and trust him in that situation. So if he's blessed you with the right spouse, that's the same kind of love you should receive from your spouse is the same love that God will give you. And a lot of times, too, when we fall into sin, we feel so guilty. If you're a child of God, you feel terrible. You know what I'm saying? Until you go and pray to God. It's the same thing with your spouse. You feel terrible until you go talk with them. And let's say it's an argument. You know, maybe y'all just had a bad day and some words were said and you just don't want to deal with each other. You're not going to have peace until you all sit down and talk things through. And mm-hmm. that's one great thing about us. We've never had an argument. One, uh, we had a disagreement one time and it was, yeah, I had anxiety all night, of course, until I could talk to her about it. And that was the only night that we went to bed like that. And that was a rule that we were told to never go to bed angry, never go to bed in a disagreement. That was the one and only time in our Almost 10 year span, right? 10 year marriage. We're getting close Mm -hmm. to 10 years. And so, you know, that's what's important. And that goes back to the communication, having that communication, being able to talk about things, even when it's not pretty, even when it's ugly. Um, Knowing when to talk about stuff, too. You should never be trying to talk about um, things that we're disagreeing in front of the children because they have no clue. We're already stressing that with the children. So carrying those conversations in the midst of that is definitely a red flag. So save those conversations for when you all are in private and y'all can talk it through together and uh, and just communicate, you know, don't go to bed angry. It doesn't feel good. Then you wake up on the wrong side of the bed. You probably don't get much sleep because you're just like, man, I can't believe this happened, you know. So you have to communicate and, and get that stuff taken care of the day it happens, you know. But yeah, so what about you, my love? Yeah, I mean, um, I was moving in again. Um, the same is what you said, the, the secrets, you know. Uh, you secrets. definitely got to talk about those. There shouldn't be any like hidden bank accounts or... Oof. Um, man, I, I remember working with someone, uh, a former manager. Ooh, don't put him out. Um, Oof. Oof. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to see this video. This will be but, the one I uh, see. Okay. <laughs> um, if he even remembers who I am, but I remember just him, um, panicking, um, one day at work and I'm like, what's going on? And, um, you know, he, I guess his wife um, intercepted some mail that mm. he was getting um, from uh, uh, private bank accounts that he uh, had. I guess he had been kind of like, you know, saving, doing some savings. and But it, it was in an account that she didn't know about. So, of course, she was kind of flipping out about it. Oh, he had to say, um, baby, I'm trying to get you on that vacation, Okay, girl. just something. <laughs> right. But, um. <laughs> You know, it just didn't go too well, Mm. you know. So, you know, these are things, conversations that you should definitely have with your spouse. Of course, everybody's going to govern their marriage differently, okay? However, um, the secrets, you just setting yourself up for for problems in the future. So it's everybody likes to be in the know, right? So even if it's like, hey, I have an account here um and just leave it like that you know like yeah. all right you know you at least let the person know that this is you know your account and what you're doing with it da 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 um but communication 
you got to say something, right? The secrets are always the issue, especially in the the relationships today. Oh, yeah. And then also just giving up. Yes. A lot of people in relationships just give up, Mm -hmm. Um, especially when it gets tough, when it gets hard, when... um, you know, whatever the circumstances that may that you may currently be in get difficult, you want to run. Mm. And instead of go to each other, instead of running to each other, you're running away from yeah. each other. All right. But we both got to run to each other, but turn the who? God. Right. Amen. I we like gotta that, turn baby. You did a little thing now. You have to show me that. Like, she ain't show me that, y'all. So, all right. I just, never mind. Never mind. That was we nice. gotta run to each other, run and then we other. gotta run to God. Woo! We may need all to right. pat. We gotta pat that. Hold on now. But y'all try to go right now. All right. That's but nice. But you gotta go to each other and God. God first. All right. So, even Amen. if you can't run to your spouse in that moment, however difficult the situation is, run to God. But then where God going to lead you, right? He going to want you to go back to communicate. Mm-hmm. There's a communication again right. to your spouse, right? Mm-hmm. Now, there may be situations where you can no longer communicate, right? Mm-hmm. And that's where we have a lot of the relationships failing, right? Yeah, because you just can't even talk. Um and without yelling and screaming mm-hmm. um and not understanding each other. But thank God we don't have to deal with that. Yeah. Well, uh, I praise, praise God, God for that because it's a whole different God. thing. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's all about respect. It really is. Yeah, you know, respect. just respecting your spouse, respecting their opinion, even if you don't necessarily agree with it. Um, you respect them and you just love them. Um, regardless, mm-hmm. regardless of anything. Yeah, and um, not give up. Yeah. You know, oh, God yeah. is not giving up on you. So why give up on your spouse? Why give up on your relationship? You know, um, you're not going to give up on your kids. Right. So you should treat your relationship the same. You know, don't give up. Yeah, it's hard. You hit a rough patch, whatever the case may be. But we got people giving up for just the mind, the minusculest, if that's a word, mm-hmm. of things, right? The most minor of things. Yeah. There are people literally giving up. And it's really just, oh, I'm at a loss for words tonight. But it's really just um, minimizing the value of marriage. Yeah. And it's just, where marriage doesn't even seem like it's um it's not as respected yeah. right yeah. cuz it's just like what's the point of it all if i'm just going to end it you right. know right. so that's all we got to fight mm-hmm. you got to fight for your marriage you got to fight for for anything that you tr- truly want and desire you got to fight for it you yeah. really do you can't mm-hmm. just give up on the the first problem that comes. You know why? Because there's going to be many more down the road. Mm. Many. Yeah. Many. Oh, yeah. But you just have to know how to navigate it together. And whenever yeah, you get through that one, best believe each thing that comes up is going to get easier and easier. Because mm-hmm. we've, been, we've been through a lot. We've and still through going through. Okay. You, you see these eyes? So. but it's like whatever comes you know whatever comes Mm -hmm. we're good i know we're solid because of everything we've been through we've been through a lot okay my my (laughs) wife always tell me and she get this from my mom because her mom tells her dad this all the time too it's like who gonna take care of you like me (laughs) That's what she be telling me. Who gonna do, who gonna take care of you like me? So of course I gotta use that too. So like, who <laughs> yeah, gonna take right. care of you like me? You you're know. Okay. So, uh, but that's what it has to be. You know, you are pretty much. And I know that the thing is why these relationships are giving up so quickly is because did you have God coming into that relationship? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if it's a relationship you're not supposed to be in, then ultimately God would have revealed that to you if you would have took that relationship to Him first. Yeah. So. We have to stop marrying the wrong people <laughs> and, and and allow God to lead us to the right people. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah. That way, when you do decide to move forward by faith and get married, 
it will last. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it will last because what? The, the relationship with God first, the communication, not only with God, with your Heavenly Father, but also the communication with each other. Um, a lot of things that you do in a relationship, guess what? You're going to continue to do those things even when you're married. Marriage yeah. doesn't stop anything, you know, mm-hmm. from happening. Okay. It's just you all are moving in, in officially. And a lot of us move in before marriage. You know, we know that story all too well, right? But, you know what I'm saying? I'm putting us on blast. But, you know well, what I'm saying? We had an episode on it. We do. So. That's why I brought it up. I'm trying to I'm trying to promote that episode. House, Definitely check that up. House, House ring, ring marriage. marriage. Okay? If you haven't listened to that one, that's a good one. Okay? <laughs> All right. That's what I do here. That's what I do. But, yes, yeah, so a lot of us do move in before marriage. But guess what? And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. We had that experience But it gives you an opportunity to learn that person deeply before you move forward into marriage. So not saying I'm totally against it. Um, One thing I did know with our situation, we knew we were going to get married. And it was literally right away. You know what I'm saying? Because of that. Um, Yeah, the parents were coming at me. Excuse me. What's going on? Not at all. We ain't teaching a (laughs) bitch. I didn't think the pastor came at me. You know, you know I <laughs> honestly never thought that I would do that. Yeah. Never you thought know. that I would, um, you know, be living with you shocking. before. Never thought Just call that. call it what it is. Well, sh- okay. Say shocking. That, you got to do your that face like that. kind of harsh, though. It, no, but... it don't sound harsh. It sounds something else. But... <laughs> right, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, but I I honestly never thought, but we, we were just kind of looking, we just enjoying looking at home and didn't expect to buy anything, didn't expect to buy it, especially at that time, but we were just kind of looking at home, just, just enjoying. Right. And then we just came to this neighborhood that had, you know, the the 1906, like the numbers and... Oh, yeah. um, it was nice. And then exactly. we looked through the home and it was just like we fell in love with it. This and then cool. everything just started going and going. And next thing you know, we had the keys. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm crazy. like, okay. <laughs> like, we did not expect to Wasn't expecting have this that. house. But here we go. We have the house, you yeah. know, and we, we were not married yet. Yeah. Not, not yet. And the biggest thing, too, with us, too, was because we were we got together. We both had our own apartment. So yeah. she had an apartment. I had my own. We would spend time in each other's apartment. So now you have one apartment that's just sitting there for months, you know, usually yeah. like two months. You're like, OK, we need to go back to my yeah. place now, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. We would do that. Um, and so you start thinking financially like, man, we're wasting a lot of money doing this, you know. So when we kick it like this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we might as well. And then we just kind of like we didn't put like a time stamp on. It was just like, let's no, start looking for it. a place together. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and really it was going to be an apartment. But for some reason, God led us to home. Yeah. <laughs> some reason. So mm-hmm. that was very a mysterious way of how that happened. Mm-hmm. And I remember we were in watch night service, you know, um, yeah. at church. Um, and I remember pastor, our pastor saying in that moment that someone's going to get a, a new home, mm-hmm. you know, this upcoming year, someone's going to get married this upcoming mm-hmm. year. I mean, everything that he said was basically us. He was talking yep. to us, you know, yep. because that's exactly what happened. We got a new mm-hmm. home, we ended up getting married. Yep. Then we had planned our big wedding after that. So, but he named everything. Yeah, we got married at the court first. Yeah. yeah. And so. So, yeah, so it was pretty much us in that. So it was almost, Mm -hmm. I mean, I will say it was God that led us through that journey. Um, So, yeah, it wouldn't, it's not, it wasn't set in stone like we were taught and raised how to do it, but it came the way it came. And so, yeah, yeah, so we're still here. We are still here. Yeah. (laughs) Feel that. Feel that. No, I'm just playing. But yeah, we're here. Wow. Praise God. That is something else. So, yeah. Really is. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All the time. So, so yeah, what a great episode. You think we're ready to close out for the Bible verse? Or? Yeah, I mean, we um spoke about how we would navigate through those tests. And um, you can always give your closing remarks. If, were those your closing remarks? In a sense. I mean, yeah. I could give some more if you have just, some more. Um, yeah. Just 
standing the test of time can only come with God and yeah. with just trusting him with with everything. And then, of course, um, in terms of the relationship, just the building that um, communicative line with your spouse where you go to them with everything and just laugh and joke about everything and lay yeah. everything down, you know, and you'll find that the more open you are, the more you start releasing things, the easier it becomes and the better your marriage will be because now you know, okay, I talked to my spouse about everything yeah, and he's good. So I can feel comfortable with whatever it is. I love it. I love it. And like we always say, communication is everything. I remember um, in our, in our wedding video, I think you were saying um, we did like a, a mini dot for our wedding that I would never have to make a decision by myself ever again. You know what I'm saying? Because we were getting ready to get married. Um, and so that's why it's so important for the communication. I don't have to make these hard decisions by myself. You know what I'm saying? I have a spouse that God has given me to help me make those decisions. A lot of decisions we used to go to our parents about. Now I go to my wife about, you see what I'm saying? And so it helps me out. So if I get a project that maybe I'm like, wow, ah, it's out of town. I don't know. I go to my wife about it. See what she thinks. Is this something that we can do right now? You know what I'm saying? It fits in. It's to the point of you all know my wife is a health nut. OK, I got I can say it out loud. I'm becoming one because of you, by the way. <laughs> but I don't even buy a new item <laughs> without communicating like, babe, what you think about this? Should I, I'll send her the picture from the store. Um, I'll take a picture. She's like, well, let me take the picture of the ingredients, please. I'm like, babe, really? She, she's doing this during COVID season, y'all. I was in the store for hours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yes. But anyway. But yes, I'm, that's that's how our relationship is. You know what I'm saying? We communicate about everything. Now, some things I mean, like, I want to get this, but I'm looking on that back. Like, she, she always teach me. <laughs> making sure things are great. And if I question it, I'm sending it right to her. And so, but that's what's so great about marriage and just having someone that you can connect with. You can talk to them about everything, your darkest yeah. secrets, things that bother you, things that you're just losing control over. You can talk to them and they can pray for you and lift you up and be there to support you. So that's what we all desire. I know we do. So Try, take those steps, try to communicate more with your spouse. If you're not, um, tell your spouse how beautiful they are. You know, you're beautiful, my love. And just remind them of those wonderful things that you <laughs> fell in love with. You got to keep that going. Even with children, yeah. you got to keep that going. Um, it's funny with Monique sometimes, you know, she's um, went on to this natural hairstyle now, you know, that she's doing beautifully, y'all. Um, but now she'll be in the mirror doing a hair like, oh, it's just growing so nicely. Oh, look at this, my love. What do you think? And I'm like, uh, babe, I don't know nothing about no hair. Uh, it looks nice, you know, <laughs> so but it showed me that my wife is desiring me to acknowledge it. And so those are things that you notice when you're so connected to your spouse. My wife want me to tell tell her that I like it and it's beautiful. So guess what I started doing? I try my best. But I try to try to incorporate that. So <laughs> you do. Like today, he probably oh, told me man. I was beautiful like, like this. five plus times, oh, maybe yeah. ten times. Oh, yeah. It was as every time you saw me, there, you're like, "You're so beautiful." That's because so I want some. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was flat. I was flat. I ain't flat. But no, you know, you know, we, you know, we gonna keep. And I'm, but no, guys, I'm like, you know, you know how it is in mommy mode. You're just like running around um, with the kids. Um, you know, you're cleaning or you're cooking, and you're just kind of like in your house clothes, and you're just kind. And then when he says it, I'm just like. But okay. I meant it I'm too. Like, Thank you, know? you. But you know, I just you know, sometimes you don't always feel that way because mm -hmm. of the you know everything you're doing. You just kind of feel disheveled. But I appreciate it. Yeah, it's my job to make sure you know. You know what I'm saying? That's me doing my job. And I say the same. I say you do. Beautiful. You do. Yeah, you do. You do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See, the only one telling me I'm beautiful. As you know, see, I was like, wow. Okay. All right. Thank you, my love. I appreciate you. So yeah. So. This was a really great session. Yeah, great, great topic, my love. Great, great, I got to give great. Monique credit for coming up with this topic. Okay. Amen. 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 So let's find out what this Bible verse the Lord has shown me for this session here. So this comes from James 1, 12. All right. New International Version. Blessed is the one who 
perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. What a beautiful verse, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful verse for this session. Hopefully you all enjoyed this session. And to the next time, we pray you be blessed, you and your families. We wish you much blessings in your business and much success in life. Much love and blessings always. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much once again for tuning in to another episode of God, Family, and Business with Ronald Dills II. And Monique Dilts. Until next time, may God continue to bless your faith, your family, and your business. Mm-hmm.